All right. Hey there, everybody out in the world of Facebook. Welcome to yet another blind spot where we chat with blind athletes reaching excellence. I am your host, Kyle Kuhn, here on Facebook Live. I am your United States Association of Blind Athletes Program and Safe Sport Coordinator. Oh, man, you guys, we are, we are just chugging along here. Um, in 2021, gearing up for the uh, gearing up for the Paralympics. I myself, I'm actually uh, coming to you live from uh, from Yokohama, Japan, just outside of uh, Tokyo. I'm here for a uh, for a triathlon uh, race this upcoming weekend. So um, hopefully, we uh, don't have too many internet connectivity issues. Uh, but if we do, uh, please just be patient with us. Uh, but as I said, welcome to another blind spot. I am super excited to bring on our guest, Mr. Anthony Ferraro, 2020 Paralympic hopeful in the sport of para judo. Anthony, welcome to the show, man. How's it going? Hey, man, it's going great. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on here. Awesome, man. Awesome. Hey, Anthony, so let's Let's, let's go ahead and just uh, start with the basics. Um, why don't you tell us just about your your eye condition, how you how you went blind, and and how you got into uh, you know how you got into judo? Okay, man. Well, uh, so it starts off with <clears throat> I was born blind. My uh, my eye condition is Leber's congenital amaurosis. It's LCA for short. It took me about five years to learn how to say it. Um, then I was born blind, the youngest of five. And I was, my mom's the second oldest of 13. So I grew up in this small beach town in New Jersey. And I had 60 cousins that grew up all around me, never treated any differently. And I, uh, yeah, so I started, I went to school up until seventh grade, back and forth from Jersey to Philly to learn, you know, how to read and write and do everything in Braille and just be independent in the mainstream world. And after that, I got into wrestling because my brother's, my brother was a really good wrestler. And uh, when I moved to the public school in my town, you know, my brothers were like, and hey, you know, you're blind, but you're also like, you're getting a little lazy and you can't do anything about the blindness, but you can do something about your laziness. Like it's time to do something about this, you know? And I was like, you know what? You're right. And like, uh, I found wrestling, at, you know, because of my brother and I tried that out and I was pretty awful in the first year I wrestled against sighted people. And just, uh, the rules were you had to stay in constant contact. And when they broke apart, uh, I had no idea where they were. So we, the referee would blow the whistle, bring it back to the center. And then, I, uh, you know, I wanted to get better. So I started training super hard at wrestling, like nonstop going to tournaments all the time, going to a club off season. And then in eighth grade, I ended up going like 24 and one. So I ended up doing like really well for myself and like all this success, you know, from all this hard work Ooh. and wrestling, I began to, you know, high school came around and I began going to high school wrestling, doing very well for myself as a, you know, the only blind wrestler there. And, you know, winning all these matches and starting to win championships. My junior year, my brother like took a, a short clip of me talking about what it was like to be a blind wrestler and dealing with adversity in life. And then he uh, he made he decided, you know, he wanted to make a documentary about it and linked up with someone and they filmed my entire senior year of wrestling. And they caught they captured like everything they captured, you know, moments of my life, different things. And in 2015, that became a, a full feature length documentary. Uh, my brother, they, the producer put together the first 15 minutes and the day they were supposed to meet my brother, uh, he actually passed away and never got to see any of his film. And at his funeral, the, the guy, Chris Sikorsky, who was his partner, came and said, you know, no matter what it takes, I'll finish this film. And that's exactly what he did. And over the next like year and a half, he finished the film and put it on Kickstarter to raise money. And it's a really, uh, it's, it's a long story, but you know, this all brings me to why I do judo because the, the film got all these views. And one of those views was actually someone from USABA, believe it or not. And they sent it over to uh, Mark Vinka, I believe, or someone in the para judo world. 
And I received a phone call from, you know, Paralympic judo asking, you know, wrestling is no longer in the Paralympics, but would you consider doing judo and trying to, you know, train and qualify for the 2020 Paralympics? And I was like, you know, this is a no brainer. Like I have to do this. So I'm sorry to throw so much at you, but it's like kind of a weird long story how I got into judo. <laughs> you there? No, man, not at all. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You there? Activity bill. Yeah, you're cutting a little bit in and out, but um, we can hear you. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, Anthony. Sorry. Sorry about that. My uh, my my internet seems to be uh, wanting to uh, be a little funky today. Um. Yeah, man. No, what a, what a story. Uh, so tell us, I want to go back to your, uh, uh, you, you said your, your brother got, got you into wrestling and you mentioned that your brother was like your biggest influence in your life up to, up to that point. Or, you know, would you still say that his influence, you know, carries you through today like yeah, absolutely you know, I'd well, say, talk, uh, talk to me about this. i'd say my brother is like one of my biggest inspirations and you know one of my heroes growing up and still to this day uh, i carry him with me everywhere and just you know it, it's like a big motivator for me uh because he was such a motivated person also and it just really you know things like that those people like my my dad, my, my brother, my mom, like my mom never babied me. She treated me like everyone else. She taught me to be independent. Like those types of people, like the wrestling coach that took me in at my wrestling club and, you know, took me from like this, you know, unathletic blind kid and like turned me into an athlete that actually started winning matches. And it, just all these people that, you know, believe in you while well, along the way, there's so many people that, that talk hate on you and, you know, there was people that would say I had an unfair advantage because of my blindness or I was faking being blind and like all these things. So it's like you really just got to focus on surrounding yourself around that support system and those people that really like influence you in a positive way. Anthony, it looks like, oh, Kyle's coming back now. He cut out a little bit, but uh, yeah, you're back now, Kyle. I think I'm back. <laughs> Am I back? You're back. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, man, gotta love uh... a... <laughs> across the across the world um oh man yeah anthony just uh what a, a i mean it, it it sounds like you know from your from your brother to your your parents and like i mean what a what a huge family i mean just the the, the team around you uh is is pretty amazing is pretty amazing you know if if you had I mean, it's, I always, I always ask this, but like, if you had just one, if you could have just one person at like a, you know, ringside at a meet, like, is, is there, is there one single person that you would pick above everybody else? Or is there, you know, is there just too many people that have had such an, uh, an influence in your life that, you know, you'd have to cram everybody into like one, one ringside seat? 
Yeah, man, it, it'd be a really tough choice, but uh, I'd have to say the uh, most success I've ever had in my life with training or uh, competing. It's pretty funny. My dad's been in my corner, so I, I'd say he's my best really? coach ever. That's awesome. And now in judo, I'd have to say, you know, my dad can't make it there because it's all around the world and stuff. And he might not understand judo as much as wrestling, but I'd say my biggest, you know, corner side support right now would be my fiance. Awesome, man. Awesome. Um, talk, talk to us a little bit about what is your, what is your daily and weekly training look like in judo? Uh, for me, it's, you know, it, it can be whatever you want it to be. If uh, I don't live at the, the training center by choice um, mm -hmm. to make like my own schedules around, you know, I, I do like three, three days a week of judo, usually uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I do two nights a week of jujitsu to work on, on the ground game for my jujitsu, for my judo uh, more like in depth. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I'll sometimes throw in even a little wrestling there if I can. And then also I do a lot of like uh, a lot of CrossFit style, like body weight, uh, you know, almost like uh, I'd like to say I have like a prison style set up in my back, out back of my apartment. It's like uh, I got like a bar, you know, like a Olympic style bar and then like the beat up dumbbells and like, some kettlebells and like a BOSU ball and just like some a slam ball and just like whatever I can use, you know, I'll use like a heavy rock if I can to like do squats and just like very, uh, I guess you would say like bring it back to the early times and like work with what you have type working out, like not going to the gym and sitting there for a long time and stuff, more active style training. Awesome. I, I love it. No, that, that, that plays right into, uh, you know, just work with what you got and, uh, you know, improvise and adapt to, uh, you know, to every situation that, that presents itself. And I, I, I think, uh, you know, being blind, we, we, we do that on a daily basis anyway, but I love that you, you implement that in your, in your daily workouts as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's like these, uh, these lessons you learn in your workouts, in your training, in your, your art, your skill, whatever you do in life, you know, these things, from an early time they, these lessons and like things you learn along the way through your your art and craft it's like these things translate over to like your day-to-day -day real life you know like even being blind like it, i when i go out and wrestle it's like it's only me out there essentially against the other person like it's all on me like no one else can do the moves for me no one else can feel it for me uh it's just like my blindness like no one else can be blind for me like I, it's i can't make excuses like it's just it's me out there and i gotta make it work dude i lo i love that i love that so much um uh, i mean from wrestling to to judo i mean do you have a like talk to us about some of your your, your biggest successes that you that you've had and like do you have a favorite uh match or memory that kind of stands out above all the others uh i'd say there's probably probably two matches in in wrestling there was um you know obviously the losses always stand out but there was a win in particular that i was really proud of in a tournament i uh i was it was at this big tournament and I, I believe it was a, it was like the first match against this really, really good kid. Kid was so like muscles on muscles, had this really good record. You know, he's older than me, uh, just bigger, whatever. And I, uh, I got, I got taken down to my back in the first like 30 seconds. Like I, I was down by five and like five points right away. And in wrestling, that's like a real big, like, it's demoralizing kind of, it can be like, you're like, I'm really down. Like I have so much to, cause sometimes you can just win by a point just from an escape or something, you know, it's just like, it's just that close. And I'm like, 
I had come back so far, you know, and I just did like the entire match. I remember I was like moving this kid around, like wrestling better than I ever had, like taking him down at the buzzer. Like I took him down at the buzzer to his back and like just ended up coming back and winning by like three points or something. It was just this, I was really proud of that. You know, it was like one of those really proud moments, I guess you'd say. And then also with judo, there's this tournament in um, Azerbaijan and I had to wrestle first, first fight. I had to fight the guy from Japan. And I remember fighting him at a training camp in, in Japan, actually at the Kodakon in Tokyo. And he was like, he was beating me so bad, man. Like it was, I was almost, I was getting discouraged and I was like, Oh man, you know, and I was still pretty young at the sport. And a year, a year later, I'm fighting him in Azerbaijan and I end up like, you know, beating him pretty good like you know ending the match with a throw so it was really awesome to have that accomplishment and just like see that uh growth through hard work and like you know success so it's these little wins along the way that really help you keep going you know it it helps like stepping stones to keep you motivated Uh, I mean, this is definitely out, you know, they, they do for me as well. How do you, you know, how, what, what is your advice for like bouncing back from, you know, something that a lot of people would see as a, as a failure, whether that be a, a loss in a wrestling match or a judo match, or, you know, maybe a setback in life. How do you, how do you bounce back from that and, and get back to a level of success? Yeah, that's, uh, I guess, really just knowing that the only way to get better is getting back up. Like, you you know, if I lay down there after I lose, I'm going to stay where I'm at. Like, I'm not going to grow from that. And, you know, these things and like, that's what wrestling and judo and like, listen, like, if I lose a match, I try to remind myself, dude, you lost a brother. Like the match isn't that bad. Like there's, it's, that's just a, a, a match. Like life goes on. And with life, the biggest advice I can't preach it enough is, you know, it starts with when you're in your biggest depressions, your darkest holes, and we all get in them, you know, some days are, they suck. You don't even want to get out of bed. And some days are like, you feel like you're on top of the world, but those spells, when you're going, you know, through that darkness and like just feeling down, it's really uh, my biggest advice is just the first step is get out of bed and make your bed so you can't lay back in it and then just start, you know, the next step after you make your bed, go brush your teeth, like go, go take a shower and get dressed. And then, you know, you already have done like three, four positive things that cause this chain reaction for your day. And like the next step, maybe you'll step outside because you just made yourself ready for it. So like that time you've been laying in bed, so scared to get up and deal with the world. It's like, you take it one step at a time type thing. And it's like the first step is just making your bet. So that's really what I could give to people. <laughs> Dude, that that's really funny. Cause that's actually a lot of the, uh, the same advice that, that I give, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, look, if you, if you just get up and make your bed, it's, it's really amazing. Cause even if you have a, a rough day and you, you like, you can come back, you come back and, you know, your bed's made and it's, it's something that, that you did. It's a, it's a, it's a task completed. And, and it's really amazing how just those little, those little successes can, can roll into bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger successes. And it's just a, it's a snowball effect. So I, I do, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I knew I, I, I knew I liked you cause you think like me. <laughs> no, I can't agree with you more, man. That your message, that's, it's perfect. That feeling of going back in your made bed, like, oh, I don't have to make this before I get into bed. If I want it to feel good, it's already made for me this morning. Like I did something, you know, I, I accomplished one thing. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, dude, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So we all, we all have these like little, these little habits or anything. Do you, do you have any like pre-match rituals or routines or or anything that like you gotta do before uh you know for a match 
um, that, you know, that, that are just like little habits that you're, maybe they're not, uh, it's almost like a superstition. Like if I don't put my left shoe on first, every time I'm going to, I'm not going to succeed or you know anything like that. Do you have any little nuances that um, are fun little things that, that happen to you every match? Uh, you know, I just try to be as calm as I can. Like I, a lot of people try to get themselves real hyped up before their matches. And I try to like, my biggest thing is I try to get that first match out of the way. Cause that's when we perform the worst. So like, if I can get that warm up into where like I already sweat out a match, then I just relax and stretch. I try to like really just, you know, I'll pray. I'll, I'll like just meditate. I'll, uh, just if I if my mind starts to wander this tactic that it's just the stupidest thing that I I picked up in high school or maybe even eighth grade for wrestling was when I heard this guy speak he he talked about this you know when your mind starts going try and have like a signal to yourself to make yourself just like all right time to turn off your brain like stop thinking so much and for me it's literally just like a clap of the hands like I'll just clap my hands and it's like all right shut up you know like it turns off like turns off the thoughts or at least it's like a it tries to Dude, that's awesome i you know just turn the brain off sometimes it's, it's all it takes it just you know if you're if you're too wrapped up in your in your own thoughts just stop thinking <laughs> even if you're even if you're pumping yourself up with positive thoughts it's like you're getting yourself worked up even before your match like relax save that Phenomenal advice. Panty, let's go ahead and bounce into some uh, some kind of fun lightning round questions. And I, I think uh, I think you'll enjoy these. And I, you know, everyone all post match or post training treat. Uh, Big Mac from McDonald's after a tournament. Oh, love it. Are you a, a dog or a cat person? I'm a dog person. I actually just got a dog three months ago. Awesome. What kind of dog? Uh, she's a big old mix. She We got her DNA test. She's actually like German Shepherd, Great Pyrenees, Boxer, Border Collie, and some other stuff. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I personally a dog fan as well. I, I currently have a, a black lab. He's He's back in Colorado while I'm I'm here in Japan, but nah, dog, eye dog's dog's right? all the way for me, man. So on board with you there. Seeing eye dog. Uh, yeah, see, yeah, dog comes from the scene. Yep, yep, seeing eye dog. So he's That's phenomenal. Awesome. I, I want to get one. All right, man. Uh, how about? Yeah, no, you you definitely should at some point. They're they're awesome. Uh, what about your favorite uh music or or band? Do you have a do you have a favorite music genre or band that you like to listen to? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan, ah, classic man. You got, you got good taste in music. Player. I I actually play the blue. I play guitar and play the blues and stuff. So he's a big inspiration. That's awesome, dude. I, yeah, I'm a I'm a guitarist as well. So love uh love when people know awesome. some, some Stevie Ray Vaughan. So you uh coffee or tea? Big tea guy tea okay you got a favorite you got a you got a favorite tea out there or um... yeah i boil hot water add apple cider vinegar lemon cayenne pepper and uh sometimes ginger and honey oh wow oh wow so you like go like you don't even you make it you make it all your yourself so you don't even uh you don't go out and like just buy it from a tea bag huh no it's it's my uh detox tea i call it, it it's really good okay. to like cleanse yourself and just give you energy naturally nice nice i'll have to try that sometime uh ch- chocolate or vanilla twist <laughs> <laughs> ah, smart smart man <laughs> Why choose when you can have both? <laughs> uh, 
uh, are you a sparkling water or sparkling water or plain water? Definitely plain. Plain water. Okay. No bubbly for you, huh? Only champagne. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. Ah, ah. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Are you a, uh, do you like to stay up late or do you like to get up early? Stay up late and get up early. <laughs> both okay you like to, there's not enough hours like, in the yeah. day, Kyle. <laughs> i hear you there i hear you there what's your uh what's your favorite you know non you know judo or wrestling activity that you do like what do you do to get away from you know turn your brain off of that uh surfing skateboarding and playing the guitar nice awesome awesome and then, Anthony, I just got one one final question for you, and I, I like to I like to ask this of everybody that we have on. Uh, how do you? And, and you can you can answer this however however you want. But how do you, Anthony Ferraro, want to be remembered as a good person? I think that's as simple and succinct an answer that we could ask for, man. Because, you know, you know, just, I think just being a good person is, I mean, Well, Kyle but seems I think to everybody back. Nope. Am I back? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. But yeah, man. So you are, you are a good person, man. And uh, I know that I, I'm a big Anthony Ferraro fan. And I know that anyone who's watching this right now and anyone that's going to see this in the future, they're going to be a big Anthony Ferraro fan. So why don't you tell us, man, how can we follow your journey? Like, give us your give us your social media handles and and tell us how we can keep up with your journey. Yeah, man. Well, first, real quick, I just want to say I'm a I'm a big Kyle Kuhn fan as well because uh, <laughs> I don't know how long ago it was, but my fiance and I stumbled across your blog and read your 21st birthday to you blog post. And man, I laughed and <laughs> cried. And oh man! It was just so. It, it was it was incredible, man. Like your writing is so good. So I just thank you for that, and I hope you don't stop. And you know, just as far as people can find me, just my website has all my links, every all my socials, and everything's on there. Uh, it's asfvision.com, and it, just all my handles are asfvision. So you can find me anywhere you choose uh youtube instagram tiktok facebook twitter linkedin whatever awesome man awesome awesome man well everybody do us a favor go find anthony on facebook instagram twitter linkedin tiktok i really need to get on tiktok at some point i think <laughs> uh, as vision asf vision dot com and all all your handles are again asf vision right absolutely man thank you so much all right before you go awesome Anthony, you we, guys. Do, we do have a hey few guys, uh, questions that brings posed us on facebook yep. oh sweet yeah kyle we just have a few questions from some viewers we can ask them to anthony yep yep let's all get right. some yeah let's get some let's get some questions let's get some questions answered all right. First one's from Monica. She wants to know when wrestling, how do you know when your opponent is about to strike? That's a good question. My coach and I worked on it so much that, uh, you know, I trained so much to the point where I could feel when my opponent would tense up his muscles where he was about to do a level change or, or go in for a shot. So it would get me ready that way where people would have visual cues. I had more tactile cues. All right. And the next two questions come from Dan. His first one is, do you get audible feedback to realize your location from the boundary? 
Uh, yes, the referee, when you're close to the edge in judo, the referee yells, uh, Jogai, which in Japanese uh, translates to, you know, something where you're on the edge or something like that. All right. And Dan, Dan also wants to know, were you involved in making the movie? Uh, I was involved as as the star, basically, like I was the feature, like I was the subject of the film. So it was all, you know, shot of me and it was all real time. No like scripts or anything like that. And it plays like a film. It's all on uh, it's on Amazon Prime, Apple TV and Vimeo.com. And it's called A Shot in the Dark. Great. And then the next one comes from Michael. He wants a two part question. He wants to know where was your first tournament? And also, he wants to make sure you said you started judo in 2017. 2017 is correct. And my first tournament in judo was um, where was that? Been, first official Ipsa one was Portugal, but my first uh, international tournament. I believe it was Brazil, uh, Germany. Yeah, it was Germany. Perfect. Those are all the questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for coming on. And, and everybody, thank you so much for the questions. Um, you know, like, like we said before, you know, give Anthony a follow on all the social media channels. Um, reach out to him through his website, asfvision.com. And you guys, make sure to stay tuned right here to the USABA social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the above. We are celebrating our 45th anniversary this year, 45 years in existence. And we are always posting up new content, always announcing new and exciting things um be on the uh, later this week for some for some exciting announcements that we've got coming down the pipeline uh we're really excited about that and uh yeah just as always give us a follow if uh, and if you guys want to hear from if you guys have a guest that you specifically want to hear from uh send it all away uh, and we'll and we'll do our best to get them on the blind spot but for now our guest today has been anthony ferraro 2020 Paralympic hopeful in judo. I have a feeling this guy's going a lot of places and going to be a, uh, a, a big, big star. So Anthony, once again, thanks so much for coming on and best of luck and best of success to you, my friend. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Same to you and good luck on uh, Saturday in Japan. Awesome, man. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. You guys take care.